What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here, and today we're gonna take a look at Affordable Espresso. This is a new one from Flair called the Flair Neo Flex. This one is the Lever Presso, which has been out for maybe two years or a year and a half, but I've not really seen much of it. And then we have here the Wakako, the Wakako Pico Presso. These are three espresso makers for around $100. Uh, when I checked online, this was at 99 US dollars. This is at 110 US dollars, not including the stand, which we'll go over. And this one is 129 US dollars. So all of them are making espresso much more affordable and in a really good way. So we're gonna go over each one of these and then I'll kind of wrap up at the end with what I think is maybe the best, whether you're traveling or whether you're staying at home or, or kind of both. Now, before we continue, I would ask that you'd quickly hit the like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. If not, no worries. But uh, we do weird coffee stuff here. And today we're going to do some deep dives into these three machines. So first off is the new release from Flair. Now this supposedly is kind of taking over their Neo line, which is actually right here. The skeleton is made of a metal. Now this sits at 150, though I'm not sure if they're gonna keep it since they brought this on. Uh, what it looks like is they may be trying to narrow their product line because they have the Neo, the Classic, and the Signature all around the same price point. Now they've come out with the new Neo Flex. It has a polycarbonate body, um, obviously a different look altogether, but it has the same chamber as the Neo. Um, and yeah, it's the, the a new price point of $99 comes both with the more pro bottom, which is tightly in there, even though there's no gasket, it's just plastic on plastic, you have bottomless portafilter. So you can kind of control the flow through that little hole so it's a, a lot cleaner. But if you wanted to have some of those gorgeous Instagram shots, you can uh, take the bottom off and you got a bottomless portafilter. Of course, you have the chamber, which is a piece of stainless steel. It has a gasket on this in the center and this nice rubber outside the silicone that uh, allows you to not get burnt, you know. We have our basket, of course. We have a shower screen, whether the water's gonna be forced through that sits on top of your puck. We have this cap, which allows you to preheat the chamber really nicely. So you can pour water in, it won't come out, and you can preheat the chamber, which is very necessary. If you go just straight in, you're gonna have really cool water that you're extracting with. We don't want that. This bad boy acts as a tamper, but it can also act as something to pop this out. Once it's all the way through, you just put it on top, pop it out, bing, bang, boom. Of course, we have that little ugly piece that uh, covers up our beautiful bottomless uh, extract. We're gonna get rid of that uh, because we're, we're, we're for aesthetics here. And then we have a little funnel to put the coffee in our cute little basket. It also comes with, this one's flow controlled. You unscrew this little bit here, and this little guy right here allows you to pull espresso with some sort of faux crema, even if you have pre-ground coffee or a crappy grinder. Come on, you don't you don't want to have a crappy grinder. All you got to spend is like 50 bucks to get a decent hand grinder. Or if you have pre-ground coffee, which you know, no shame in that. It, it, it is what it is. Uh, but you will improve your quality if you go with uh, a nicer grinder. Not sure how much it weighs, but being made of polycarbonate, it's quite light. Ayo! Something that's interesting that I read online is that the pressure gauge kit that you can get for uh, the the your signature, or the classic, or the Neo does not work with this, which is interesting because it definitely fits the chamber. It's the same exact size as the Neo chamber, and it fits in there just fine. Um, I'm not I'm not sure why they recommend against it. Um, so we're not gonna really deal with it because guess what? This is about 56 bucks, and that puts us over 150, 160 bucks. So we're not gonna mess with that. Adding the water to the thing. Now we're gonna add the plunger, but I'm feeling feisty. We're gonna go with the pressured one and see just why we can't use it. Cause I'm not convinced we can't use it. Let's toss the scale under, grab a cup, tear it out, and let's see how this goes. So far so good. Got a little pre-infuse going. And then we're gonna ramp up nine bar. Sitting right there, kind of loving life. We're at 13 grams in the basket. It's coming out really nicely. I'm gonna start ramping down now that we're at 15 grams. Slowly ramp down the press. Slowly ramp down the press. We're at 20 grams, I'm at five bar. And 
We're gonna do a nice classic one to two. There we go. The pressure gauge did work, but I can see what they're saying on how it doesn't work with this. The lever's really wide, and so you can't put the pressure gauge on if the water's here. And I guess it could, you know, be dangerous having to transport, I don't know, pouring water on your table and then going up there, I don't know. But what I know is it does fit, it is tight here, so you're gonna wanna make it really close to the edge, but it does fit. So if you wanted to get a $99 Neo Flex, and eventually outfit it with the $56 pressure gauge, it does technically fit. I know Flair says no, but the results speak for themselves. So first we're gonna, well of course we have to sip what I pull. This is Pepe, this is Pepe's coffee, roasted by him. I've gotta drink it. Bottoms up. Mmm. I don't like it. You loved it. You loved it. We'll have to take your part out because you slurped. <laughs> Fantastic. It's a little awkward to use. It doesn't feel very good being that like plasticky feeling, the polycarbonate. It feels kind of weird using it. And honestly, I know that the original Neo did flex a bit. This one feels like it is. I mean, because like, look at this. You can kind of like twist it around and whatnot, but that should not affect the joints and how it's constructed. I'm sure they did numerous stress tests, so it should be fine. But I tell you what, it just, it it feels like it's not fine. The fact that it doesn't come with a pressure gauge and they recommend against it, 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 it kind of stinks. But again, this is for the most entry level novice out there. I do think you can outfit it with the pressure gauge, though it's not necessarily recommended if you're wanting to like see that as a next upgrade, a next step. Um, but the build quality is definitely inferior to the, the proper Neo, which is now 150 US dollars. So this does shave off, you know, 50 bucks, which is which is quite a big saving. And then you can use that savings towards the pressure gauge. It's not portable. So, I mean, I guess you could carry it around with you, but it's all in one piece. That's the thing. So like, it's not really gonna fit snug anywhere. It's like, you just carry it. Bravo on chopping the cost down and getting this down to a hundred bucks. Next up, we have the Wakeiko Pico Presso. So this little cutie comes in this super compact, tiny, teeny, tiny traveling case. Feels really nice, very good. We open it up. Let's go ahead and break down what all comes with this because I think it is brilliantly put together. I am obsessed with the design, the package, everything about this I think is just so fantastic. I mean, look how, how tiny and cute it is. And their way of creating pressure using this little knob, boop, is so fun. First, we're going to take off the bottom. If there is any leakage or anything in your hiking, ain't nothing coming out. Boom, look at that, off. Then what we have down here is if you, uh, whenever you're pumping, because it's hard to, you know, stay steady, they have this as an option to kind of center your flow out of the bottom. But guess what? We like them beautiful bottomless shots. Look, there's the basket, voila. So we're not gonna use this, though you can. Don't feel bad if you wanna use it. Don't feel bad, there's no shame here. It's a safe space. The top just simply screws, cool. This is what I think is brilliant. Inside, look at this, you pop that out, we have both our tamper, which is perfect, it's a little palm tamper, and we have a shot collar, a little funnel. Look at that. Then if you wanna take the basket out, you just unscrew the bottom, and there it is. So this right here is the shower screen. It is necessary to keep on this piece of rubber. It kind of acts as a gasket, but the water enters into this hole, and then it spreads out over the shower screen inside, on top of your coffee, and then of course we have the basket. And let's pull a shot of Spro. So we got our coffee ground up and ready. Tappy tap in. Now because we got the clumps, we got Professor Clump, I'm gonna take my WDT. There we go, nice and pretty. Little tappy tap, take that, and just palm press down till it stops pressing back at you, okay? And there we have our done puck. So now I'm gonna put the shower screen on top. Preheating with this is quite nice. You can preheat right before because it's like plastic on the inside. You don't really have to worry about um, needing to go quickly because, well, it's not really gonna retain much heat anyway. I do recommend a quick little flush, but in all reality, it's more so gonna, going to um, maintain the heat inside. It's not really gonna hold heat in the plastic itself, uh, unlike metal which you would need to preheat thoroughly in order to get it to a high temp. This is just gonna kind of retain the temperature like a plastic V60 would. All right, let's get ready for a fire show because I'm sure there'll be some channeling and uh, it's gonna make probably a little mess since I took off that bottom piece. But guess what? I like to play with danger. Push this in and there it comes. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start clicking it in. And when you feel a little bit of that resist, oh yeah, I'm starting to feel the pressure build. I feel the pressure build. 
Okay, pressure's there, and I'm going to kind of sit here and let it saturate. Oh, there's some drops. Very pretty. I'm going to let it sit here for a bit, give it another little pump. I'm not going to do anything insane. Let it kind of pre-infuse, just slow, tiny pumps. I'm kind of holding it halfway right now. Now we're at five grams. I'm going to pump again to bring it up to pressure. Just slowly pumping it. Keeping it going. Just keeping that pressure high. And I'm going to slow down the pumps because I'm letting it kind of decrease in the pressure. And we're just going to aim for that one to two once more. And we are there. All right. So we did 15 in, we got 30 out. And there's our spoon. If you don't like the sound of sipping espresso, don't listen and probably don't go to coffee shops. Woo! That's intense. Actually, has quite a bit of florals, but it's could have used some more water. Could have used a bigger ratio, but it's still pretty nice. Lots of strawberry, strawberry jam. And like white flowers. But anyway, you don't have a pressure gauge. You can't upgrade to one. There's no real place for it. When you're traveling, this is obviously a travel espresso maker. Is that really that big of a deal? You know, you're not going for perfection when you're out in the wilderness, but it's still a fun one to use. Bottoms up. Yowza. And finally, we've got the Lever Presso by Hue. Now this ended its Kickstarter campaign or Indiegogo, whichever one it was, back in the end of 2021. And I've not really seen much on it, to be honest with you. Um, and I was excited to get one a few months back. I haven't done anything with it uh, on the channel, obviously, and thought today would be a good day to kind of unveil it. because I'm actually pretty impressed with it. First thing you notice is it has the similar kind of double arms. Whoops, let's take that off. The double arms as the original Fama Baby, which I have a video on here, and the Cafe Lot Robot. So when you push down, you're kind of of doing an inside motion. So it's not, it's not really pushing force down, but into the middle, which is helpful because the stand does not come at 110 US dollar price tag. You have to add it on. I don't see it currently available on their site. They have their old stand there, which is like $56. I assume this will be the same cost, but when you take into account, this could be both a home a home espresso brewer and a travel one. That's a pretty good. That's a pretty good cost. It's 166 US dollars for the whole package. I'm imagining, assuming this is 56. Then you essentially have a robot at home. Of course, it, it's not built to the same um, same quality standards as the as the robot. But the what it's, what's coming out is is very similar. It came in this big old travel pack, which had everything in it, including the stand. But of course, you don't need the full travel pack because. You don't have to take the stand with you when you travel. So it also came with this. So the whole brewer fits inside of here. The way it sticks onto the, to the stand is with these two little thumb screws. You just gotta loosen this out, loosen it out, bada bing bada boom. These screw into it and hold together the clasp. Arms are up and then you open the clasp just like so. So this is the stand, it's very heavy. It's robust, it's a robust piece of metal here. This probably weighs, I don't know, five, honestly like four or five kilos, I'd bet. And then it also has this cute little pad which you can put your scale on, your cup on, whatever you wanna put on there, fits really well. Put it right behind that nice little strap. And look at that. Hello, this is my clutch, but it really makes espresso in clutch situations. Get out of there. So this top is obviously just to keep these little pieces safe as you're traveling. So if it gets hit, it's good to go. It's a helmet, all right? It's a lever helmet. So we take that off. We're gonna take off this bottom part and take a look at what's inside. So first what you see is there's a split shot attachment, but that's just shoved in with a little gasket inside. You don't have to use that. But what happens here is espresso will fill the middle tray and then there are little channels out to the side at, to the sides. So you can split shots if you'd like, um, which we don't really use that. So we're gonna get rid of it because we like that nice naked Bottom shot. This basket though is their competition IMS basket. So it comes with the IMS, which is absolutely fantastic. I saw on their website they had a non-IMS option, but obviously I'm going with a uh, name brand here. Then we look here, that's just the water dispersion screen. As you can see, in case you forget, instead of branding it, they put, use this side out. Thank you, Hugh. What's nice is it comes with a pressure gauge. So out of these three options, it's the only one with a pressure gauge. Now there was a sticker on this saying it is accurate to plus or minus 0.3 bar. I think that's more than good enough though. At the price point, that's actually really nice. Now for you all who are wondering, I did try to take this out and put other pressure gauges in it that I uh, that I had, even using a Y splitter so it could fit a little better. But the pressure gauge works just fine. 
fine. This actually acts as your cup. There's little circles on it right there, and those stick onto that cup. So if you're out and about and you want to pull espresso, uh, this is why I brought up the fact that the arms go together and not down. Because you're going together, you can put it on a surface and you don't have to worry about cracking anything because you're just, when you're pushing, you're pushing together. Then when you're done, just take that off and go to Slurp City. Let's go ahead, we're gonna pull a shot. I'm gonna pull it inside of this so you can kind of get a better look at it and what it kind of feels like if you're gonna use it at home. If you wanted to, if you did have a shot mirror, you probably could see the bottom of it, but who brings a shot mirror with them when they're out traveling? I don't know, me. Comes with a funnel as well. Now because we have the shot collar, we're able to WDT, make it nice and even. We'll tap, and then this bad boy acts as a tamp. And of course, we just lift the arms to place it in. I've already preheated this, so we should be good to go. Get the arms down by its side. Just fill straight in. Lift the arms up, sucks the water down. Then we can start our timer. Start with a little pre-infusion. A little saturation of the puck. I meant like, like two bar. Letting that get to about five grams. And then we're gonna go up to about nine. Okay, I'm slowly cascading, I'm down to six. Down to five, four, three, two, and one. There we go. Pulled a little bit more than one to two because the last one was a little, little sour. Mmm, it's a little sour because it's one to two, but it's still really good. Magic spoon. Done. Much better, much smoother. Really balanced out the coffee, tasting good. Now mind you, for those of you watching going, but where's the crema? The coffee I'm using is a much lighter roast and it's um, like four or five weeks off roast, so there's not gonna be much crema. All three of these can make thick cremas, you just need the right coffee. That's what it seems like pulling it. Obviously, if we didn't have the stand, it would just be on the table, not a big deal. Uh, but I actually have turned the pressure gauge around so I can kind of look at it, but normally it's facing the other way. It feels really nice to pull down. It's very easy. You know, you get it on top, it's even easier. We have the Flare Neo Flex, which again is 99 US dollars. We have the Lever Presso from Hue, which is 110 US dollars. And we have the Wakeko Pico Presso coming in at 129 US dollars. Of course, as I said, you can do the pressure gauge on this, which they don't recommend, but it does work uh, for an extra 56 or 50, yeah, I believe 56. And you can get the stand, uh, which I'm, I'm speculating is going to be 56 once this one is released. They have a current one that has like three legs that's available. I don't like that one nearly as much as this. This one to me seems a lot, it's a lot prettier and I think it just works better for scale placement, cup placement, and all of that, those things. And then the Wakeko just kind of comes cute like this in its little carrying box. So when we're considering the, the two types of users I'm kind of thinking or watching this, I guess there's three because there could be a meld of the two, is one, we have the people kind of new into coffee and they want good espresso on a budget. This one, when it comes out, has a pressure gauge, which is going to really help you understand how much force you need to be giving that coffee in order to hit the standard nine bar or in order to kind of replicate something you might see where people say, oh, a spring lever kind of has a descending pr uh, pressure profile. It gives you the idea, the understanding of that, so you can kind of chase those numbers with this built-in pressure gauge. The, with the Flex and with the Pico Presso, you're kind of guessing. It's much easier with the Pico Presso because the button just gets really hard to push when you're at top pressure. This one, you don't know how hard to push, and you may go really, really hard if you're too fine. Uh, and I don't know if it'll break. I've not broken mine, and I'm a pretty big dude, but um, you might break yours. Pressure gauge is a very nice thing to have when you're dealing with something like a direct lever. Something like this, again, is just much easier to guess and you're good. For new home baristas, my preference is, is this one which uh, at the price point. Now, if you go up another $100, the Flare Pro 2 would be my choice between the three. I believe that's at about 200 US dollars, maybe 249, I'm not sure. But that's more than, that's doubling, maybe two and a halfing the price. Now we go to like an advanced home user that just is on a tight budget, which that's a lot of us, especially right now. But this one is just what came out at the top. It was giving me most consistent espresso because I was able to replicate my shots when I was dialing in. A frustration when you don't have that pressure gauge is as you're dialing in your coffee, you don't always hit the same pressure 
pressures and the same descending pressures every time. So you might make a tweak on your grind size, but then you might put a little extra pressure in the beginning and then it might not be the right grind size for what you're trying to do. So it can be a little frustrating dialing these two in. You kind of just get it in a specific gray area and you're good with it. This you can really dial in because of that. And it's just, it's a little easier for control when you have these two arms. That's one of my favorite things about the Cafe Lat robot is because it has the two arms, it gives you quite a bit of control over the pressure profile. This does the same thing. The single arm gets a little difficult whenever you're trying to do it all. And honestly, the name says it in itself. It's a flex. You got to flex in order to get it going. When we go a little bit further and we look into the quality of the parts, I really, really do not like the flex. It just feels so incredibly cheap. Like, I know that they're hitting a price point. This is made with really solid material. This is made with incredibly solid material. And this is coming in at roughly the same price point. And it's it's just a hunk of polycarbon uh, plastic. Like with the original Neo, for instance, it kind of sits all sleek-like. I really like that. Um, and I'm sad that it's up to 150 and that it doesn't really hit the same target market, but you know, I, I, I think it does a great job. It makes you good espresso. If you have one, you're going to make great espresso. I'm just nitpicking. Preheating it is fine. This whole bit, this whole piece is fine. Um, I do wish that they came with a pressure gauge. I just think that's so important as people are learning espresso. Even if you're using the flow control bit, I think it's good to kind of understand where you're at pressure wise. That way, as you continue to advance in your coffee making skills at home, you can switch the tips and go to the black basket, which is the free flow, right? And then you're able to, when you get your new grinder and your starting to dial in, you'd have a little bit more understanding of what, what's happening. You'd have to upgrade to that, and there is some rubbing on it, so it might not be good for the long run. I'm sure there's a good reason they say it does not, it's not compatible with this. You just have to make sure everything's lined up perfectly, and you have to apply the pressure gauge with the water already in it before you set it up here, which I think is probably why they recommend against it due to how bulky this lever arm is. When it comes to size, compactness, and quality altogether, I mean, this is just such an incredible little brewer. I am absolutely obsessed with the fact that the tamper and the shot, funnel, the shot funnel fit right there in the top. I think that is just, I mean, I can't get over that. I, I absolutely love it. And then of course you have this, which I think is brilliant, just that little piece of silicone with a hole in the middle. So if you're out camping or something and you're, you're pushing, you don't wanna pay attention. You don't have, you know, channels spurting everywhere. You don't have a ton of different drips. But if you want that beautiful Instagrammy shot, you just pop that bad boy off and you got an exposed basket. And then of course inside we have the really well thought out shower screen, which I think they did a good job of creating a hole for the water to enter. And then on the back side of this, they have this to kind of facilitate the entry of the water throughout the whole screen in order to give you full saturation, even saturation going throughout. The tamper with this is ac actually great. It, it, it fits the basket really nicely. Fits it really nice. I mean, it's a little loose. It could be a little more snug, but it still fits pretty nicely. It's built well and it, and it feels nice. Like, and it, it's a little palm tamper. I really like that. I think they did a good job at, at hitting that. The Neo uses, you know, a little piece of plastic. I don't love that. It doesn't feel good when you're tamping. It's really loose in the basket and it's something that you could probably get something better for. So I'll just take some calipers and we'll measure the baskets and that way you know if you can get aftermarket tampers for them. When we're looking at the Neo, the basket size is just under 40 millimeters. Very small. It holds about 13 grams of coffee, depending on your roast level. I'd say like 12 to 14 or so, but I've been doing 13 gram shots. Probably this one on Etsy selling uh, Flare Neo tampers because the Neo's been out for a while and the chamber is the same. Then when we look over here at the Pico Presto, the Waqueco, a 51 millimeter tamper will fit in this, which we know there are a lot of 51 millimeter tampers out there because there are a lot of 51 millimeter machines. And then when we take a look at big boy here, 51 as well. So both of these are 51 millimeter baskets. So there are aftermarket tampers for these and aftermarket baskets. <laughs> Boom, it does fit and vice versa. That's good to know. And you can, like I said, you can always get a better tamper because the Hue comes with this yucky one. This is a piece of plastic just like the Neo and you kind of palm tamp it and it doesn't fit super well. But what's nice is this is this acts as a dosing cup for your coffee and it has this little spout, which is kind of nice to pour into your grinder. They have Hue everywhere on this machine. It's on both sides of this cover. It's on the pressure gauge. It's inside this. It's inside the shot funnel. It's on the bottom of the basket. They're like, yo, don't forget. We're hue. When we look at the quality of the build, I mean, these two definitely take the cake. I think that overall, when you talk about compactness and you talk about efficiency and you talk about uh, ease of use, this one uh, probably takes the cake. But again, overall, when it comes to all of these things, especially because you can get an aftermarket tamper if you're using it as like a stand-up machine like this, this one is just, it's, it's really well built and it does a really great job. If you're on a tight budget and you need something to act as both a travel espresso machine and a stay at home, when you throw this stand in, even if you don't, 
you have essentially like a, a little cheaper built Cafe Lot robot. The robot is my preference by, by quite a margin, but this is still an incredible espresso maker and honestly probably makes similar similar quality. It's, it's hard. I have a bias because I think the robot is absolutely beautiful and the history of it being the, uh, the predecessor of it being the Famina baby. I just, there's a lot there, but this seriously does an absolutely fantastic job. Then when we get to the, the to the, the final bit, which is travel, I've already kind of covered it, but this thing, because you can unscrew it and you can put it in the small travel case, it's almost the same size as the Pico Presso. I was wrong. You could actually fit the Pico Presso in here and you wouldn't know the difference. In my mind, if you're doing travel only, you know, you may want to do this because the size, but if you're wanting that extra bit of control with the pressure, with the nice IMS basket, with, you know, all, all the, the ease of use of this machine, with the really nifty cup that attaches to it. I mean, this just does such a good job. I'm really, obviously, if you can't tell, I'm a big fan of it. I'm a big fan of it. I, I think I would choose this over the Flare Pro 2 even. Um, to be honest with you. I love this style of espresso machine. Uh, I think it's really easy to control. It's not the greatest looking thing ever because you can kind of tell, especially with how it fits back here. That kind of annoys me. Um, but you know, when you're spending 100, 150 bucks with the sand included, that's pretty rock solid. If you have one of these, I hope that you enjoyed the video and I hope that if you know, you're a flex, I I'm not, it's gonna make you good coffee. Don't worry, I'm being very nitpicky here. Uh, the, the size of this is so hard to get over uh, and it was, it's a difficult choice to say that this is my overall favorite because I just love how brilliantly they have everything all in one. This one has a little bit more pieces that kind of, you know, like I don't really know where to, where to put this. But overall, I think it's gonna give you the best coffee. It's very portable, uh, it's easy to use. And no, I did not put on oil to look really good. I just look that good. So thank you so much for watching and I hope that you brew something tasty today. Cheers.